Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, Mars gets an update, chromosomes, and not just one mosasaur, but two, um, mosasaurs. Starting off the news this week, ESA's Mars Express spacecraft has detected three new underground lakes near the south pole of Mars, reported in the journal Nature Astronomy. Water was discovered relatively recently on Mars back in 2018, which generated great excitement, especially in relation to the question of life on Mars, and so this new discovery has once again brought that question to the forefront of debate. Unfortunately though, the lakes discovered now are thought to be exceedingly salty, and this brings doubt to the idea that life could be living in these lakes. However, the researchers believe that these lakes could have been present under Mars for a very long time, drawing upon conclusions from recent research showing that these types of salty waters can last for long periods of time. Also in the news this week is an incredibly interesting paper about everyone's favourite extinct relatives, Neanderthals and Denisovans. Maternally inherited mitochondrial DNA has been sequenced from these humans before, but this study has now managed to extract paternally inherited Y chromosome sequences from male Neanderthals and Denisovans for the first time. Interestingly, these sequences confirm that, although Denisovans and Neanderthals are more closely related to each other than to us modern humans, there was an early interbreeding event between modern humans and Neanderthals that led to the Y chromosome sequence of Neanderthals looking more similar to our own than Denisovans. This is the same case with the mtDNA, and suggests that the Neanderthal Y chromosomes had a lower evolutionary fitness, leading to them being mostly replaced by modern human Y chromosomes. And now over to Ben, with some news about other things that have happened in the news this week. Thanks Doug. Well, up next we have not one, but two new genera of mosasaurs that have been named this week. The first one is Nathomortis stadmani which was formerly known as Prognathodon stadmani, but in a recently published study has been found to fall outside this previously named genus. The original material came from Upper Cretaceous rocks in Colorado, but it was the more recent discovery of additional fossils that allowed this reclassification to happen. The second new taxon is Gavialomimus almagribensis, perhaps? I have no idea, which is based on material from the Upper Cretaceous of Morocco. Gavialomimus has an incredibly elongated snout, providing some interesting insight into niche partitioning in these prehistoric Moroccan marine ecosystems, and various anatomical characters allow paleontologists to confidently name this as a new genus and species. Finally for this week, we have a very interesting publication that describes a distinctive burrow form found in eastern Australia that is immediately overlying and even cutting across the horizon of the end Permian mass extinction, or Great Dying. These burrows were likely made by small cynodonts, and the rocks show that these were made in a dead zone, a period relatively devoid of life immediately after the extinction. These burrows, therefore, demonstrate how organisms such as cynodonts and other small digging tetrapods had an advantage that allowed them to survive in the harsh world of the Great Dying. A fascinating find indeed. Back to Doug in the studio. But he's not in the studio, he's... up there somewhere. Thank you, Ben. <clears throat> Uh, excuse me. Uh, that's it for 7 Days of Science this week. I do hope you enjoyed it. And as always, we'll see you on Sunday.